Today I'll be showing you how to connect a server running Ubuntu server to a Wi-Fi network. Now, just so you don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about the desktop version of Ubuntu. Any noob can figure out how to connect their system to their Wi-Fi network on Ubuntu desktop within like five minutes tops, I'd say. What I'm talking about is Ubuntu server, which is another version of Ubuntu designed for servers, and it's CLI only out of the box. And it's meant to be a very minimal installation of Ubuntu, again, geared to servers, but it's also used by people that just want a very minimal Linux install right out of the box and then build on top of it. And there's actually a few people in the Linux community like that. But anyway, connecting to Wi-Fi with Ubuntu server is pretty complicated. And the reason for that is because since Ubuntu server was designed for, as the name suggests, servers and is CLI only, so totally not noob friendly. But anyway, I get it that there are some people that their server does not have access to a wired ethernet connection. I mean, hey, I'm one of those people. Now, of course, using ethernet is preferred when possible, especially for a server, because wired ethernet connections are faster and more reliable. But anyway, without further ado, I'm gonna go walk you through the process of connecting a Ubuntu server system to a Wi-Fi network. And in this video, I'm gonna be assuming assuming the worst case scenario, which is that your server does not have access to a wired ethernet connection. But anyways, let's get right into it. All right, so now first, you're gonna head over to packages.ubuntu.com, and I'll have this linked in the description. Once you're on this website, you're gonna scroll down to the search feature. Now the package we're looking for is WPA Supplicant. It's already right here. And then under distribution, you wanna select the code name of the Ubuntu release that you're on. Now, I'm assuming that most of you are gonna be using 20.04 LTS at this point. So in that case, it's gonna be focal. And if you're not sure, you can always just on your Ubuntu server terminal, you can just type lsb underscore release dash c, and then it'll give you the release code name. So in our case, it's focal since I'm on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So we're going to select that then click search. And then the package we want is right here, so we're gonna click on that. So now what we wanna do is download a WPA supplicant for the appropriate architecture. For most of you, this is gonna be AMD64, so let's click on that. And then you select the mirror right here, click on that, then click save file. Now I've already got the files that we need saved on my desktop. So now you can't just download that one package and call it a day. We actually need to get its dependencies first. So now you're not gonna need to download all of these, because some of these are actually pre-installed on Ubuntu server by default. I'll show you the ones that we will need though. So you're gonna need libnl3200, libnl genl3200, libnl route3200, and libpc slight1. Once you've downloaded these packages, you're gonna wanna create a folder for all these and then just put them all in there. Now, once you're done, you should end up with five files for dependencies plus the WPA supplicant package. So now you're gonna wanna put this on a flash drive. Now you can, of course, do this on a dedicated flash drive, but if you wanna put it on the Ubuntu server installation media, what you're gonna do is go to your file system root, then go to the media folder, then your username, and then you're gonna wanna make sure that there's a directory called writable in here. That's like meant to be the writable directory for Ubuntu server. Now we can't write to this just yet. What we need to do is pop into a terminal and do sudo chmod 777 dash capital R slash media slash your username slash writable and then hit enter punch in your password. So now the reason why we need to do this is to change the permissions of your Ubuntu installation media's writable partition so that we can put files on it ourselves. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that folder with your packages and then just copy it to your Ubuntu server server installation media is a writable partition. You can just drag it and drop it there. And now you should end up with a WPA supplicant folder with your packages. Now you may notice a bunch of other files here. Don't worry about those. We only need to worry about the WPA supplicant folder or whatever you called the folder for your packages. But anyway, once you're done that, you're gonna eject your Ubuntu server installation media. And then once it says that the device can be safely unplugged and the two partitions of your Ubuntu installation media are gone from the left-hand side, you're good to switch over to your Ubuntu server system. So now, if you haven't installed Ubuntu server yet and you want to do this from the installer, you just select your language 
keyboard layout. And with this Ubuntu server VM, I've disconnected from the internet on purpose, just to show you that this does work. But anyway, you're gonna go to help, enter shell. And by the way, if you already had Ubuntu server installed, you just log into your server as normal. And then you're gonna type lsblk, and then find your writable partition. So now it'll depend on the size of your flash drive. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna take note of the size of whatever partition you put your packages on. In my case, it's SDA3. So I'm gonna type mount slash dev slash the device. In my case, it's SDA3. Now yours will probably be something like SDB3 or SDC3. Then after that, you're gonna type slash MNT. So now if we CD into slash MNT, then do an LS. Now you should see the partition that we just mounted. Now we want to CD into the folder with our packages, in this case, WPA supplicant. Then we can LS and see all our packages. Now, by the way, I just want to say that if you get a permission denied error running the mount command, just to do sudo mount, whatever. So now what you're going to do is run dpkg i. And now we could type in all these packages manually, but here's a shortcut. Since we're in the directory with all our packages, we can just use the asterisk character to tell to install all the packages in this directory, then hit enter. Now again, same principle, if you get a permission denied error, do sudo dpkg i asterisk. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is do cd slash etc slash net plan, then we're gonna ls. So as you can see, we have two files. You should only ever have one file in here. So we're gonna do rm 50 cloud dash init dot yaml dot dist dash subiquity then hit enter. If we do an ls again, we should now only have one file. And if you get a permission denied error, you're gonna do sudo rm, the file name. So now we're gonna do nano into the only file left in here. In our case, 00-installer-config.yaml. Now, if you do this command and it complains that it's read only, you're gonna just get out of nano and then do sudo nano, whatever. But anyway, you're gonna hit enter. And now, one thing to keep in mind is that these types of files are very sensitive to space. So now we're going to take note of how many spaces an indent is, in our case two spaces. So when we add an indent we want to add two spaces. Don't do tabs because that will not work. And we can actually remove this comment. But actually one thing we forgot to do is do IPA to get the interface name of our wireless network card which will start with the letter W. So once you got that jotted down, we're going to go back in here. Now we're going to indent, then type Y Fies, then hit enter again then indent twice, so four spaces in our case. And then you're gonna type the interface name of your wireless network card. On my computer, it's WLP1S0, but yours might be different. And then you're gonna put a colon. And now we wanna indent three times, so one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. And now if you wanna do a simple DHCP configuration, you're gonna type DHCP4 colon space yes. And now we're gonna press enter, then indent three times again. So again, six spaces. And then we're gonna type access dash points colon enter. And now we wanna indent four times. So you should have eight spaces and then type your SSID. So you put your SSID here. Now, of course, you're gonna to wanna to replace SSID with your actual network's SSID or your network name. Now, if your SSID has spaces in it like this, what you're gonna do is put quotes around your network name like this. And then after your network name and quotes, if applicable, you're gonna to wanna to put a colon. And now we want to indent five times, so 10 spaces, and then type password colon your Wi-Fi password. Now be sure to replace this part with your actual password, if you know what I mean. Now, if your password has spaces in it, like Wi-Fi password, same principle with the network name, you're gonna wanna put quotes around it. And now, if you are fine with DHCP, you're pretty much good to go after this. However, since this is a server, you may want it to have a statically assigned IP address. In this case, you're gonna set DHCP4 to no. Now, I just wanna say that this configuration is assuming you're on a home network, which I'm assuming most of you are. If you're on an enterprise network, the configuration might be slightly different. But anyway, we're gonna hit enter after DHCP4 colon no, then indent three times, so six spaces, then type address as colon, then we're gonna put square brackets here. And now in these square brackets, you're gonna put the LAN IP address of your server. So you're gonna wanna go into your router settings and make sure that the address you want is in 
isn't being used already, and that it's within the range of IP addresses that your router will allow you to use, which you can check by checking the DHCP range settings of your router. Now, unfortunately, I can't really help you with this since this is the case where every single router is going to be different. But anyway, once you've picked an address that is within the DHCP range and is not being used by another device, you're going to punch that address in. So for example, if you want it to be 192.168.0.101, you punch that in. Now, Ubuntu server will want you to punch in your server's IP address in sitter form. So that looks like something like this. Now, the slash 24 represents the subnet mask 255.255.255.0, which is what most people have. Now, if you're not sure what to put here, if you're on a home network, in most cases, you can just get away with punching in slash 24. So I wouldn't really worry about it too, too much, since most people's subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. But anyway, after that, you're going to want to hit enter, then you're going to want to indent three times, so six spaces, then type gateway four colon space, and then we don't need square brackets here. This is the gateway address of our router. So now, if you don't know what this is, on a home network anyway, this will be the IP address that you would go to to change your router settings. Now, if you're not sure what that is, go to a device connected to your Wi-Fi network and look at the gateway address on that device. But anyway, once you've found it, you're going to want to punch in your gateway address here. An example would be 192.168.0.1. It's basically the LAN IP address of your router. And then once we've done that, we're going to want to indent three times again, so six spaces again. Then type name servers, colon, then enter. Now indent four times, so eight spaces. Then you're going to type addresses, colon, square brackets. And now this is going to be where you'd punch in your DNS server addresses. So now I'd actually suggest putting two DNS server addresses. Now you'd want to separate these DNS server addresses by commas. I'd actually recommend you use Cloudflare's DNS servers. They are 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. All right, now once you're done, your NetPlan configuration file should look something like this. If it does, we can hit Control X, then hit Y, then hit Enter. So now we're going to do a NetPlan generate, just to make sure that it doesn't give any errors. Then hit enter. Then we're gonna do a net plan apply. Then hit enter. Okay, so now the reason why my net plan apply didn't work is because I don't actually have a network card attached to this virtual machine. But when you go to do it, your net plan apply shouldn't give out any errors. If it does give out a connection time doubt error, probably means you're using the wrong network interface, which again you can check with IPA. But anyway, if you want to test whether your network's connected, what you can do is just do ping any website like google.com and then hit enter. Now, in my case, it doesn't work because, again, I don't have a network card attached to this virtual machine. Now, I also want to say that if you've done this in the Ubuntu server installer, after you install Ubuntu server, you're going to have to do this again. However, I'd actually suggest you do this in the Ubuntu server installer just to allow it to go get security updates and install OpenSSH for you. So that way to eliminate a step in your server configuration. But anyway, if you're in the installer, you can just type exit and it should take you right back to the installer. So now your network connections page in the Ubuntu installer would still show that it's not connected to a network, but if your ping command worked, then you are connected to the internet. So don't worry about that. Congratulations, your Ubuntu server system should now be connected to your Wi-Fi network. If you've made it to the end of this video and you're still having trouble, don't hesitate to look for help online or even just drop a comment in the comment section. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.